Welcome to One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. This is our guest. She is Dr. Uh, Daphna Lemish, who is a distinguished professor at the School of Communication, Information, and Information at Rutgers University, which I know very well. Yes, I, you do. You're a graduate of our program. We're yeah. very, very proud of that. I will uh, disclose that. <laughs> I barely got out. <laughs> Let's do this. Take a look at this headline from our friends at the Star Ledger. But this was reported in a lot of newspapers. What's on TV for kids? Not much diversity. And that is exactly what we're here to talk about. Doctor, you and your colleagues did a study. Yep. Children's television in the US and in Canada. And you found some alarming things, particularly around the lack of diversity. Make mm -hmm. the case. Well, first of all, just to clarify, it's not just US and Canada. It was an international study. US and Canada was just part of it. So the issue we're talking about is, is global, international. Well, what we found was that still the television screens that our children are exposed to are dominated by white males from middle class. So, uh, enabled, that's another uh, uh, really important point to emphasize, that you don't see any children with any kind of disability or any kind of health issues. So, what we find is that you have a minority of, of females, which is still amazing, you know, 10 years a ago. A minority of well, females in this day and yes, age? Yes, which is amazing because we did a same, similar study 10 years ago, and we were sure that now, 10 years later, we'll find, you know, <laughs> equality with everything that we've been discussing about gender equality in the last 10 years. Sure. So, it moved up from uh, females being 32% of all the characters on children's television to 38%. So we have a little progress, but if we wait for this pace of progress, it's going to take another 25 years to get to 50 And how are women, how are girls portrayed versus boys in a lot of this programming, so in terms of their power, their so, ability so to get things done? So that's a really important question, because it's not only the number, it's also how they're portrayed. So we know the females, for example, tend to be more um, a, a, a followers rather than leaders. They tend to be in groups rather than be loners. The boys are more loners. They're kind of the top of the pyramid. They're, you know, higher, they, they compete. Are boys seen more they, as they leaders? Compete. Boys are more as Thinkers? leaders. Three, time, three times as leaders. Also, they solve, boys solve problems using STEM. They're using uh, you know, technology, they're using science, they're using math, using engineering. And girls? Uh, magic. Magic? Magic, you know. <laughs> Remember the fairy with the yes. fairy? So girls use their magic, their charms, their sexuality, whatever it is, to f solve problems, while boys use skills and they use uh, talent and they use rational. So those are all very old-fashioned kind of traditional but doctor, stereotypes. Excuse me, if you're just listening to us on the audio side, this is Dr. Daphna Lemish from Rutgers University, did an important study internationally on this. So what message does it send to girls as they watch well, this? By the way, we have an eight-year-old girl, uh, daughter, who watches, and I'm so, really concerned. You know, if you're not represented, if you don't see yourself, whether you're a girl, whether you're a person with, abil with disabilities, whether you're a minority person, when you don't see yourself, you imagine that all the exciting adventures, all the talented things, all the falling in love, all the good things that are happening to children <clears throat> are happening to white boys. And what about me? If I'm not represented, what does it tell me about my value in society? Uh, we keep saying that television is, is a school. It's an alternative school. It teaches our children about life. It is about what's valued in our society. It teaches about what it means to be a boy, what it means to be a girl, what's good, what's bad. It socializes I mean, it's a, them. It's, it's supposed social. to reflect society. And what about children who are, frankly, not very rich? Well, they're not Were they represented? They're not represented because most of the text stories are about middle class or middle and higher class children. And that's really a problem because we're not talking about representing poverty. I mean, it's, we're not talking about campaigns for, you know, with children starving in Africa with mosquitoes all over them. We're talking about children who are from different life circumstances mm. and still can be happy, can be talented, can be resilient, can be capable, can have, you know, good life. So you don't have to be middle class. You don't have to be rich to have a full, meaningful life. We're taping this program in Newark, New Jersey at NJTV, you don't see a lot of kids from urban communities like Newark? Is that what no, you're saying? No, we don't. We don't see minorities. So what are they looking at? So, well, so kids in Newark, Jersey City, Camden, Philadelphia, New York City, the Bronx, they Brooklyn, look they look, at, what do they see? They look at white middle class society and they think this is what life is and should be. And, what and where do they fit in? They don't fit. And the interesting thing about it is, as I said before, this study has been done internationally. And because most of television that is, travels around the world is produced in the United States and other Western countries, so children around the world are watching American television. So you could be, in a, for example, you can be in Ghana where 95% of the population is black, yeah. is African, and you still see a society that is white. What about who's behind the scenes making this children's that's, programming? That's what does that very, reflect? That's very relevant because what we found in the study is that the majority of the people creating this content are males. So you have, especially in the directors... Shocking. In the well, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I know. So, so they, what do they make stuff about themselves or what, they the way bring, they see themselves? You know, they bring their perspective. They bring their life experience. Right. 
experience, and that's what they know, and that's what they think is normal. We also found talk about the value of diversity in the workplace. Go ahead, yeah, I'm sorry. So, so, so it's mainly the creators and the directors that are males, but also the writers and producers. You see a little bit more of uh, mixed teams, like you have mm. females and males together, but very few teams that are led by women. So it's still dominated by males. Um, and the other important point is that most of the television for children is fiction television. Out of it, most of the programs is animation. In animation, right. the, the profession of animation is highly dominated by males, and they produce whatever they believe you know, is, is their life experience. Listen, I don't want to turn this into a commercial for public broadcasting for PBS, but PBS was examined here. Mm -hmm. And we've done a lot of collaborating with the Children's Television Network, the folks who make Sesame Street yeah. happen. And I know that uh, Julia is a character on Sesame Street mm -hmm. who has autism. Yes, uh, I think Down syndrome or autism? Well, she has autism. Autism, okay. And we've my, talked about this extensively. Okay, my mistake. Was PBS in any way different mm -hmm. in children's yes. programs? Yes, PBS was different. PBS has a higher percentage of women in the workforce and also a better presentation and representation of females. For example, many of the female characters on television in PBS are leaders rather than followers, which is a very different result than from the other stations. And it's not, you know, when we talk about PBS, everybody talks about Sesame Street, which of course, uh, you know, is a flagship We're a lot of education. More than that. But it's a lot, a lot more. There's so many other programs that are being produced now that consider girls, that consider diversity. Uh, in terms of diversity, of race diversity, you see better, uh, in better representation in PBS than uh, commercial television. The LGBTQ so it makes community? Oh, they don't exist? They don't? They don't exist in children's television. Yes, they don't exist in children's television, just like, uh, um, you know, poor children don't exist and people, children with disabilities don't exist. They don't exist. It's a in children's, but they exist. Well, of course they exist. But they in exist children's in large television, numbers, it's isn't it? In children's television, it's taboo. We just had a big scandal of... Yeah, we just had a big scandal about this recently um, in a program that did uh, present some kind of uh, a mixed marriage, uh, uh, one sex, you know, uh, same-sex marriage. And that was, was controversial? Huge, and that was a huge controversial well, I, 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 in children's I, I, television. We watch Modern Family with our children, yeah. and I'm thinking to myself, that's not, that's a commercial, well, that's not even public broadcasting. Children, children's I mean, television is quite conservative in that regard well, and in other areas as well. So it that's adults' not, programming, and I'm referring to with Modern Family. Children's programming, what is it, draw yeah. a line and say we're not talking about yes. this? Yes, that's absolutely true. I, in one yeah. of my studies, I interviewed producers, and that was their <sighs> argument, that they do not show... Uh, at all, do not touch this topic because it's taboo, and they're going to get terrible, uh, 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 you know, responses to that. We have uh, just a minute or so left. Dr. Uh, Lemish, from uh, distinguished professor from Rutgers University, from the program that I was proud to graduate yes. from. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you something before you leave. What are we supposed to do now? Now that you've well, done this study, what are we supposed to do? Well, I'll tell you what we do. First of thing is, like you said, you graduate from our program, is that we educate and train the next generation of people in the media to be aware of issue of race, of uh, diversity, and all kinds of human uh, demographics and human characteristics. And we hope that they will be leading a different kind of, of screen in the future. That's one direction. Programs like this, you know, raise awareness of the public that this is an Just issue. Just talking about it, exposing talking it. Talking about it and selectively watching programs that do show diversity and not watching programs that don't. I mean, we know this industry is based on ratings, and if you just don't watch programs that you think are not representing your world and not yeah. representing the values mm -hmm. you believe in, you don't watch them. And if you don't watch them, there is power there. Final comment on our end. I appreciate what you said about ratings, but in public broad broadcasting, we are blessed to be able uh, to do programming that makes a absolutely. difference. Um, we would love to have more people watching, but ratings do not drive what we do. I, I do uh, but know. We're fortunate enough to yeah. raise the money to make it happen. I do Dr. Uh, Duffna Lemish, distinguished professor at a great program. It yeah. is the School of Communication and Information at uh, the State University of Rutgers University. I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Well done. I'm Steve Adubato. This is One on One. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, RWJ Barnabas Health, TD Bank, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, The Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Russell Berry Foundation, and by Johnson & Johnson. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.